What's going on everybody? It is the one and only Q here from Retro Q Gaming and here we are right at the end of our console generation. So it's given us seven years to see how a console has fared, to see seven years on how everything has been handled. It's had its ups, it's had its downs, it's had its backs, it's had its forts, it's even had its weird little sideward steps and diagonals and moving in all sorts of weird S-shaped directions. But now, because the Xbox Series, I'm even going to call it the right name, Xbox Series X and Xbox Series S are going to be launching in just a few weeks from now with their next generation consoles from Microsoft, well, it feels like the perfect opportunity to go back and look at the Xbox One. More specifically, what is my game of the generation, if you will, for Xbox One? Now this is a very, very weird question when it pertains to the Xbox of this generation because, well, the Xbox One had a pretty bad start and it got progressively worse and worse and worse to the point where Microsoft basically gave up on consoles and started releasing all their games on PC as well. In fact, sometimes they even released them on PlayStation and sometimes they even released them on Switch as well. So what qualifies for a game of the generation for the Xbox One? Well, it's a bit weird. I can't even give it the same qualifiers that I did with the PS4 games because frankly, they've pretty much all come over. Off the top of my head right now, there are two exclusive, two actual true exclusive Xbox One games. And um, hell, you, I would even argue one of them isn't. One of them of course is Halo 5. But the other one is Rare Replay, a game that is, well, when you look at a collection of games and everything else that those games are available on, it's not really an exclusive, is it? So, essentially, off the top of my head, there's only one true exclusive left on the console. Feel free to chime in and let me know if I overlooked some really mad, random, obscure game, but you get my point. So, for the purposes of this video, we're just going to include stuff that... I mean, I guess is more synonymous with first-party Microsoft or some type of deal like that. I mean, technically both Ori games did come out on multiple platforms, including the Switch, but that would still be eligible when it comes to this list. Because ever since the end of 2015 slash the start of 2016, Microsoft no longer make Xbox console exclusive games. Everything comes to PC, minimum, at the same time. In fact, Microsoft make more proper PC exclusives now than they do console ones. There are several new games or remasters or whatever you want to call them, hell there are even a couple of new ones that are only on PC and not on the Xbox consoles. But this video isn't about that, I'm not talking about Microsoft's business practices, their decisions etc etc. But either way, let's break it down. Now unfortunately, compared to the PS4 version of this video, the PS4 had many high quality games that I had to narrow down ever so slightly again and again and again until I eventually got the two games and had to pick one of them, in a way. Unfortunately for Microsoft, that's not really the case for this entire generation. When it comes to Microsoft and the Xbox One, it's really a 90-10 or maybe even 80-20 split. So it's pretty much a guaranteed lock for said game. Now just to pad out the video and give you a little bit of context on this whole situation, the losing game of this, if you will, the 10% or the 20% is Halo 5 Guardians. The only true Xbox One exclusive left, until of course it is pretty much guaranteed to get a PC port down the line. Especially with the infinite, indefinite delay. Now you may be wondering, but Q, Halo 5, what's the deal with that? We know your thoughts and feelings on that. We know the general consensus on Halo 5. Well, the main reason for it is, while the story and most of the setting and all is absolute garbage, the characters, for the most part, outside of Master Chief and Cortana are absolute garbage. How the story progresses, and you know what? Pretty much everything, except for Master Chief, Cortana, the little bonus piece extra with the legendary ending. Since all of that is garbage except for those pieces. The one thing that stands above and actually holds up on a quality side of it is the actual gameplay. The gunplay, the controls, the gameplay itself stands solid. 
And that is even more evident, which is something that is important to me, because I play a significant, or at least I used to, play a significant amount of Warzone Firefight, the 8 player cooperative mode against 5 waves of increasingly difficult enemies. And it wouldn't be fair for me not to give this second place, just because the story is garbage, the characters for the most part, the setting, etc. Just because most of that is garbage. The multiplayer mode with Warzone Firefight kept me coming back for several years. I'm almost at max level. Hell, if they bring it over to PC before Halo Infinite comes out, I will be max level before Halo Infinite comes out. They've already promised if you do hit max level, you get some sort of bonus in infinite. It's probably only something like a skin or a nameplate or something. But hey, if it's there, I want it. But the fact that it kept me coming back for so, so long gets it an honorable mention in this list. But either way, without further ado, a game that keeps me coming back even more and more and more and is more enjoyable in practically every single way. Ironically, except for the Horde-style modes. So the Xbox One game of the generation for me is Halo, the Master Chief Collection. As broken as it was at launch, and even for months if not years after, it was the general quality of all that Halo in one single place. Compared to its previous iterations, you even had increased resolution, increased frame rate, and it was the first time you got Halo 2 Anniversary Remastered. And as great as the, well, limited greatness of the console version, naturally, we're including the PC version as well. Because if it wasn't for the Xbox One version of that Master Chief Collection, we would not have the vastly superior PC version. Which is the main reason I love all of this. And the main reason this wins. It's so much better on PC in every single way. It still even exceeds the promised Xbox Series X upcoming version. Therefore, I have to announce Game of the Year... Xbox One Edition is, of course, as we mentioned, Halo, the Master Chief Collection. Quick little third place honorable mention for Gears 4. Was a nice looking game. Was a decent playing game. Even if the story wasn't great. But Horde Mode in that kept me going for literally years. Unfortunately, Gears 5 couldn't maintain a couple of months. But anyway, that's the Xbox side of it. Thanks to Halo, the Master Chief Collection, Xbox One and PC we have our answer. What about you?